we are going to discuss an example of a singular snake clocked system. In this video, we discuss designing a sequence detector using D flip-flops. And in the next video, we will discuss how to do this using JK flip-flops. This diagram shows a clocked wave. This is a positive edge or rising edge. This is a negative edge or falling edge. This is a period. The clock defines the time and the machine changes state upon a clock transition, either positive or negative, but not both. So we can define the present state at time t and the next state at time t plus one. This is a d flop, a change of state on a positive uh, clock transition. And the next state of the fifth flop is given by this equation, qt plus one equals dt. That means whatever is on this side, zero or one, will go to this side on a positive clock transition. Now we want to design a sequence detector that outputs a one. If the total number of ones received is a multiple of three. In our design, the input is i and the output is f. The procedures of designing such a machine are standard. We first create the state diagram. We will use a muni machine in our design, meaning that we label the I.O. input output at the transitions. So uh, this is the input I and this is the output F. We start with the state of detecting zero. If the input is zero, the output is zero and it goes back to zero, or the next state is zero. If the input is one, the output is zero, the next state is uh, one, one, meaning that it has detected a one. And at this state, if the input is zero, output is zero, uh, next state is zero. And uh, at this state, if the input is 1, the output is still 0, but it goes to a, uh, a new state 2 ones. Uh, yes, detect 2 ones. And at this state, if input is 0, output is 0, and it goes back to 0. And uh, if the input is 1, then the output will be 1 because 3 ones have been detected, and the next state will be 3 ones. Yeah. And at this state, if the input is zero, the output will be a one because uh, it does not change the number of ones. Okay. It is a model of three. And if the input is one, then the output is zero because now we have detected four ones. So it goes back to uh, uh, the one one state. The next step is to assign states. Okay. We have four states, so we need two fifth flops. So uh, suppose we call the two fifth flops Q1, Q0. Okay. We assign uh, this state to be a zero, zero, meaning Q1 equals zero, Q0 equals zero. And uh, this zero, one, and this state one, one, and this state one, zero. Then from here, we construct the state table. Okay. We list the present state uh, Q1, Q0, T, input it output ft and the next state uh, which is q1 t plus 1 q0 t plus 1 it is e equal to d1 t d0 t and since all these are t so they are interconnected by wires and gates the table is obtained from the state diagram and it's straightforward to say uh, when the state is 0 0 and even 0 over is zero, next state is itself. So you have uh, this row, okay? And if uh, the input is one, then it goes to the new state, uh, zero one, okay? So you get this row, okay? When it's at this state, zero one, okay? Input zero, output will be zero, next state is itself, okay? So we have uh, this, okay? And so on, okay? And uh, next, Okay. We find the Boolean expressions for d1, t, d0, t, and ft. We construct column maps from the state table. 
So this is the map for D1. Uh, this is for D0. This is for F. Okay. And the D1 map is obtained uh, from the column D1 of the state table. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. And we group the ones in the number of power of two. So these, these are two ones, so we group them together and obtain these equations. Okay. D1 equals I dash Q1 or I Q0. And same for uh, D0. We use exclusive or to simplify the equation a little bit. So this is equal to I exclusive Q0 or I Q1 dash. And for F, the same thing. It is your Q1, I exclusive law, Q0, okay. uh, which is equal to uh, I exclusive or complement. Okay. This is the circuit diagram for this equation, Boolean equations. Uh, say, for example, uh, say a DC okay, is equal, equal to I exclusive or Q0 or I Q1 dash. So this is I exclusive or Q0. This is I, okay, Q0. So this is I exclusive or I and Q1 dash. So this is I, okay, this is Q1 dash, okay, complement of Q1. So this is all together you get D0. And similarly, we get D1 and F. So this is output, this is input. Okay. And finally, This is the Vela code. Okay. So this is a standard implementation of D flip flop. The default variables are one bit. Here, Q, QN are one bit registers. Inputs CK, clock. Uh, RST, reset. And D are one bit wires. This is the sensitivity list. When there is a positive transition, this block will be executed. Pose at uh, means positive at. This applies to uh, both CK and RST. Okay. For example, when RST changes from 0 to 1, uh, this block will be executed. Okay. And uh, these two statements will be executed concurrently, that means at the same time. The block won't be evaluated when RST changes from 1 to 0. Okay. This is also true for the clock, for CK. Okay. The value uh, D goes to Q, and uh, the complement of D goes to QN. Okay. At the same time, when there's a positive clock transition, the symbol uh, here means concurrent assignment. This code shows a strict forward implementation of the uh, detector we just uh, discussed. Okay. Uh, so these uh, equations correspond to uh, the equations here. Okay. So we use uh, continuous assignment to represent the circuit. The code implements the Boolean equations uh, that we just obtained. This is the test bench. An initial block executes just once. And that means that these statements are executed only once and in sequence. And always block repeats. So this we place every five time units. Okay. 
implying that the clock toggles to either from zero to one or one to zero every five time units. And the program terminates after 200 time, time units. So uh, now let's uh, compile and execute this program. So we use iVerloc to compile it. Okay. So the output uh, executable is a dot out. Okay. So this is the output. And so the OST, okay, the clock IF, the time. Okay. So the, when OST is zero, and when the, your clock okay, changes from zero to one, okay, it will uh, change the state okay, of the machine. And this I is the input. So from here to here, zero to one, it detects a one. Okay. And zero to one, it detects another one. Okay. And zero to one, it detects another one. That means it has detected three ones, so you output the one. And it won't change anything when the clock transits from one to zero. Okay. And then uh, now yeah, in this clock transition zero to one because the input is still one. So the output should be a zero because we have detected four ones. Okay. And here five ones. Okay. And here six ones, so we have another output one. Okay. And there's no change when the clock transits from one to zero. Okay. And so on. Okay. So you can examine the more detail the outputs of this uh, program and you can try that uh, yourself. Okay. Thank you for watching. Okay. Uh, bye.